20 secret mission to the moon to salvage an ancient alien spacecraft. Some believe that dark side of the moon is real. Others believe that astronauts never went on the moon, that it's a lie. You better roll in, drop a thumbs up, and let's check it out. The Apollo spaceflight program lasted from 1961 to 1972. Apollo 11 was Neil Armstrong's famous first step. Apollo 17 was the last manned mission to the moon. In all, 20 Apollo flights were planned, but Apollo 18, 19, and 20 were canceled. But in 2007, a retired astronaut blew the whistle and claimed Apollo 18, 19, and 20 did happen, but they were highly classified. NASA recently came out and they said that they're going back to the moon, which is absolutely wild after that many decades. It's crazy because God knows what else they got there, right? This because he was the commander of Apollo 20. He said the reason these missions were kept secret is because of what they found on the moon. Well, not just what they found, also who they found. Yeah, I love the Wi, wi Files, man. W Channel, W Channel, W Channel. The primary goal of the Apollo spaceflight program was to land the first man on the moon. And this was achieved on July 20th, 1969, when Neil Armstrong famously said, That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. That was Apollo 11. Apollo 12 also landed on the moon successfully. Apollo 13 had to abort after Tom Hanks famously said, Houston, we have a problem. But Apollo 14, 15, 16, and Apollo 17 all made it to the moon. But here's where things get weird. The Apollo missions made all kinds of scientific discoveries that experts still study today. But despite the success of these missions, Apollo 18, 19, and 20 were canceled due to budget cuts and lack of public interest. But ever since then, I don't. I don't buy that, bro. I don't buy that. NASA got all the budget in the world. The government is back in, backing them up. And the fact that they never went back to the moon after that many years, that's just that's just crazy to me. Maestro, what's up? How you doing, man? Welcome on in. There's been a story floating around that those flights actually happened, but they did so as part of a top secret black budget program. Mm. Eventually, we would get confirmation of this. In 2007, a YouTube user with the handle Retired AFB posted a video that set the internet on fire. It was a short clip that showed the interior of an Apollo spacecraft. First, we see an orange porthole looking out into space. Skeptics were quick to jump on this film as a hoax, but if we compare it to actual known photographs of Apollo craft, it's a match. Oh, the next Damn. shot is of a control panel. And this too matches up. When was that video posted though? That's the thing, because now, right now, the deep fakes have gotten so real. You cannot believe anything you see. There are apparently AI streamers streaming on Twitch. So in this day and age, you do not even know what's real and what's not, right? And, but, but that image looks very close to the, the original thing though. Other Apollo missions. What stands out is the flag and the mission patch. These are hard to make out in the early videos, but we'll see them in detail later on. The flag is a combination of the American and Soviet flags. The patch shows Apollo 20, the name of the mission. At the bottom of the patch are the names of the astronauts, Snyder, Leonov, and Rutledge. Soon after releasing the video, retired AFB admitted he was William Rutledge of the United States Air Force and mission commander of Apollo 20, which flew in 1976. The middle of the patch shows two space... Damn, so 1976, we are talking about like... 24 years till 2000, right? And 23, 2023 right now. So 24, 23, 27, 37, 40. It's been 47 years. That is insane, bro. That is insane. Craft with ropes or cables around a submarine. No. A sturgeon. No. A submarine. You said that already. Yeah, well, I couldn't come up with a third one. And comedy comes in threes. Oh, you think this is comedy? Oh, bite me. Bruh. Anyway, the submarine is actually the purpose of the mission. Apollo 15 went to the moon in 1971, and it had taken a lot of pictures. And what was of particular interest? Officially titled Apollo Image AS-15 P9630, it shows a swath of lunar landscape on the far side of the moon. But if we zoom in... How many of you guys believe that far side of the moon actually have like structures, alien bases? Because that's a massive conspiracy, right? That they are hiding something on the far side of the moon. And that's where the structure uh, structure's at. That's where the aliens are at. 
there is like a whole lot of conspiracy with that stuff. Uh, Maestro says that about Project Bluebeam, if you watch Spider-Man Far From Home, Mysterio used drones to make things real and Mysterio was pretending that he's fighting even though he is the one control controlling. Yeah, true, true. I mean, we in, in reality, we have that technology right now. Obviously, that was the last video we saw. Guys, 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 guys. That Project Bluebeam video is on the Scary X channel, okay? I will, I will show you. You can check that out uh, after the fact because this is one of the video. Yeah, this is the one. We uploaded that four days ago. This is one of the, the craziest video that you will find. If you didn't get to see, I'll just show it right here. But, but truly, they do have that technology and if Marvel movies have really desensitized us, they really have opened us to the idea of the, the, the aliens and the, the ET, the UFOs and intergalactic, the, 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 the space travel and all that. They have really just readied us all up for the idea if one day the government comes out and they reveal it. Most people wouldn't be like too shocked though. Yeah, there will still, we all will be shocked. We all will be like, damn, so it's real? Yeah, that would happen for sure. But I don't think it would be too crazy because if they were to reveal everything back in the 50s, but even back in the 90s, I think there would have been like a completely different reaction compared to if they were to do it now. There still will be a reaction, don't get me wrong, but it's gonna be... But right now, I feel like that most people are open to the idea. Most people believe that E.T. is real. What if you believe E.T. is real too, if you think they're not real? Uh, I just want to know your thoughts. No resources on the moon. What's the purpose to go back? Mm, yeah, and if you, yeah, if you, if you're like, hey, there's nothing on the moon, then I understand your your thought process. But the conspiracy here is that they're hiding something on the moon, and uh, they were told to never go back on the moon by the ET. That's the the conspiracy. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. But but if you believe that there is really nothing on the moon, then it totally makes sense to never go back on the moon. That that totally makes sense. I agree. Into this area. We have a hell. Right, that's the image that's currently available to the public. But originally, it was this. But NASA also has this. Ah, that's the submarine! That is Apollo 20's mission. Identify hey. and, if possible, breach the two mile long spaceship that crashed on the moon 1.5 billion years ago. No. Oh, shit. Oh, okay, shit. I cannot wait for him to explain this entire plot and t uh, sell us on the idea of why it's real. And then all of a sudden, towards the end, he always does that. Towards the end, prove us wrong and that all wrong. of this is wrong. Like, I cannot wait for that. So let's see. This is going to be a bumpy ride, guys. F uh, fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be crazy. Let's check it out. Over time, Commander Rutledge released more photos and videos online. He also released excerpts from his journal and gave more background on the mission to the moon. In 1971, the Soviet Academy of Sciences contacted American President Richard Nixon with a proposal. The Russians had images of the ship taken from the surface. They also had images of what looked like a city, but they didn't have the technology to visit the site, but the Americans did. Mm. After the success of the Apollo Soyuz, which was the first US-USSR joint space mission, the Soviets proposed another mission. Cosmonaut Alexei Leonov, commander of the Soyuz, would accompany two American astronauts to the alien crash site. You say that again? What? Alien crash site? Nah, it's like music. Sweet, sweet music. So, Leonov and Rutledge were joined by Leona Snyder, who would serve as the pilot. Then, on August 16th, 1976, in the dead of night, a Saturn V rocket took to the sky and embarked on the most important and most secret space mission in history. Ten, nine, Ignition sequence start. Six. Yo, it is truly fascinating that the just seeing like the older videos like that. Truly fascinating. The the older the camera, the more real it, it, it feels like. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, they one. Didn't, okay, they didn't land. They flew up there and faked the landing in a sound studio. Yeah, there are conspiracies there as well. I don't know what's true, what's not. What y'all believe, let me know, man, in chat. For sure. At the end of the countdown, just after ground control call zero, there's a moment that seems to go on for hours. At that moment, years flash before your eyes and play like a movie in reverse. Your thoughts turn to friends, to family, to home. The capsule's shaking like crazy, and you're aware of the rocket engine swelling like a tidal wave, but there is absolute peace. The mind quiets. There is no fear. 
fear would come soon enough. I imagine, I would imagine. The idea and the thought, bro. Liftoff is called and the rocket begins to float. People think you shoot off the pad like a bullet, but in truth, you hover. Just for a second, not even a heartbeat. You float. But the next second, the next second begins a physical ordeal that will last eight and a half minutes. You imagine, imagine you're an astronaut, right? You're in a, in a, uh, in a rocket like this. It would be kind of nerve-wracking, though. You would be pretty anxious about it uh, in the beginning. But once you're in the space, then it's like a different story. It's just the, the, the thought of the unknown, the fear of not knowing what would happen. And, and also, also uh, this is one of those things that many don't do. Many people would never be able to experience. So the, the, the fact that you are one of those astronauts that is in the space rocket going up, that, that just truly is... Uh, Fascinating feeling. Terrifying as well. It goes slow in the beginning, but then goes fast, you know? You would be packing your decks. The moon is an alien satellite, they're watching us long. The weight That's another of a building pushes against your chest, making every inhale a battle of life and death. It's not uncommon for someone to pass out during these eight and a half minutes, though when that happens, we never tell. Mm. After the crushing journey through the atmosphere, you go from 3Gs to weightless in an instant. It's like, it's like a tether suddenly snaps, and then you float. It's not uncommon for someone to vomit at this point, but again, we never tell. I look down at the earth and white clouds swirl over blue oceans. I look at the land 125 miles down and get the sense that someone somewhere is looking up. I take a moment to catch my breath and smile. Those eight and a half minutes roaring through the earth's atmosphere, that was the easy part. Mm. Three days wild. later on August 19th at about 10.30 in the morning, the Apollo 20 crew entered lunar orbit. Then the crew was informed of a secondary objective for this mission. Track down and find out what happened to Apollo 19. Whoa, what? Well, the Russians had much better information about the alien crash site, which is why the Americans agreed to a joint mission. The United States sent Apollo 19 to explore the wreckage a few months earlier, but the mission failed. Only the Apollo 19 crew and the most senior people at NASA knew about this mission. The launch and transit to the moon went fine, but ground control lost radio contact when Apollo 19 got to the far side of the moon. They hadn't been heard from since. Rutledge and his crew were instructed to check a specific storage compartment in the landing module. This compartment typically held tools and containers for bringing back moon rocks and soil samples. Oh, but not this time. But not this time. This time, the storage compartment had guns. Damn. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. What, what are they going to do in space? That, that, that thing even works in space? Good morning. My name is Carl Wolf, and I was a precision electronics photographic repairman with a top secret crypto clearance in the United States Air Force. I was stationed at Langley Air Force Base in Virginia. In 1965, um, in mid-1965, I was loaned to the Lunar Orbiter Project at NASA on Langley Field. They had problems with the guy that landed on the moon said himself it's not real it was in a studio uh what's uh, the astronaut name uh let me know in chat uh, i heard stories but never really dig i yeah there's a conspiracy with that stuff too with a piece of uh, electronic equipment that was bottlenecking their production of photographs i went to the facility and when i walked into the facility there were scientists from all over the world i was stunned actually to see people at a NASA project uh, from all over the world. It didn't make any sense to me initially. Um, I was taken into the laboratory where the equipment was malfunctioning. A uh, airman second class was in the dark room at that time. I was also an airman second class. I was interested in how the whole process functioned, how the data got from the lunar was orbiter to the laboratory. I asked the young man if he described the process to me. He did. About 30 minutes into the process, he said to me, 
um, in a very distressed way um, by the way we've discovered a base on the backside of the moon. And then he proceeded to put photographs down in front of me, and clearly in these photographs were structures, uh, mushroom-shaped buildings, spherical buildings, and towers. Um, I worked there for three more days, and I remember going home and naively thinking, I can't wait to hear about this on the evening news. <laughs> and here it is, more than 30 years later, and I hope we... Damn, 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 that is a massive nuke here. That's a massive nuke, but I still, I, I cannot wait for him to explain why this is just fake, this is false, right? But if this is really true, that is insane, right? Because for the longest amount of time, there has been a lot of theories, a lot of conspiracies, and sometimes you also find people with, uh, with their, with their, uh, actual, what, what's the thing? It's not binocular, a telescope, right? Telescope. Bruh. You, you find people using their telescope, looking at the moon and catching some different kind of activities, but it's the far side that you cannot see. The, even with the telescope, and that's the conspiracy that they got some structures on the far side. Uh, aliens are real, and this and that, and they're they're there, they're watching us. And, and when they first went on the moon, they saw the the crafts. They were told to never come back, and, and other stuff. And that that's why when you see the astronauts first ever interview after coming from the moon. You look at them and they're like pale, they look like they do not belong, they, they look like they are defeated, they look like they've seen some shit that they cannot talk about. They Because that was a massive feat, that was a massive uh, for humanity, that was a massive uh, achievement for them and massive achievement not just for the US but for mankind as a whole. Like first one to be on the moon and the fact that we have the technology to put men on on in space and on the on the moon the fact that we did that and, and they came back gave their interview and looked pale as shit that's one of those conspiracies that yep they were really told that uh to never come here but that's a conspiracy is that real is that true what are your thoughts because if you look there watch their interview they're not like hyped they're not like excited you would you would don't even hear any enthusiasm in their voice when they talk about uh what they did on moon and because at least they could have they don't need to jump around and be like yeah guys we went to the moon this and that but they could be at least enthusiastic about it, it almost as though they never really went there Bruh. uh that's basically the the tone of their voice was just a dead giveaway that something is just not right if you listen to the interviews ironically the russian never dispute the moon landing just americans um i personally i believe the moon landings are real i believe that we went there but the question is that are the videos real because some believe that the videos are not real they were shot in a studio others believe that moon landings never happen where are you at in this do you believe that moon landings never happen do you believe that the videos were just fake or do you believe that we really went there the videos are real nothing is fake or do you really believe that nothing is real everything is false personally um i believe that the landings are real but the videos could have been they they could have shot it in a studio because they didn't want the the video to because in this day and age in 2023 they can easily airbrush stuff they can easily remove stuff from the video but i believe back then they must have had some thing in the video that they didn't want it to show the public so it could have been one of those things hey guys uh, we don't want conspiracies going wild we are not ready to tell you guys the truth so we're gonna go ahead and shoot that in the in, in hollywood we're just gonna shoot the videos and that's what we're gonna show uh and we had like skeptics and we had the debunkers finding out that there were like air bubbles in the recording if i'm not mistaken i'm talking out of my ass when i say air bubbles okay because i believe i heard that somewhere that somebody spotted air bubbles in that moon landing video and that was like a, people were like okay that was underwater they shot it at hollywood uh like they shot it uh, with green screens and other stuff right so these are the conspiracies it's fascinating stuff uh what you choose to believe is up to you uh but what do you believe we hear about it tonight and i will testify under oath before congress that what i'm saying is the truth Okay, okay. Rutledge and Leonoff sat in silence as the moon rover closed the distance between the landing site and the alien ship. Rutledge felt that the silence was inspired by part wonder and part fear. The hull of the ship first appeared over the moon horizon, looking like another hill. But as they drove closer, the men's chins slowly raised higher and higher. When they were finally in the shadow of the craft, it was hard to tell how big it really was. Unsure of the ground underneath, 
they decided to park the rover about 800 feet from the craft and travel the rest of the way on foot. Rutledge and Leonoff chatted amiably on the walk, but the closer they got to the ship, the quieter they got. It was massive and mm. awe-inspiring. The ship was over 300 feet high, the length of a football field, and as high as a 30-story building, and just as wide. The length of the ship seemed to go on forever. They knew the ship was two miles long, but that's just a number until you're right on top of it. The first thing we noticed was how old the ship was. Having been on the moon for over a billion years, it almost looked like part of the landscape. The hull of the vessel was coated in moon dust, the powder that turned everything here gray. Another indication of the ship's age was that it was pockmarked with ancient meteor impacts. This alien ship has been here since before the Pyramid of Giza was built, Holy. before the Sumerian civilization emerged. But I started to become dizzy, realizing the ship has been here since before the first dinosaurs walked the Earth. Everything about this mission stretched the limits of the human mind. It was too big to comprehend, too old to comprehend. Here I was, walking on the surface of the moon, having traveled here in a rocket, the pinnacle of human technological achievement. And yet, in the shadow of this ancient relic that somehow made its way here from a distant star a thousand millennia ago, I felt like little more than a caveman. Man, the, just the thought alone of uh, that is just truly insane, right? The, the universe has been around for billions and billions of years. There are billions of galaxies. There is The odds of us being alone is just very small, very small. I don't even believe that there are uh, there's any odds. We, we're not alone. There is just no way, right? But some believe that we are definitely uh, alone and that's, uh, that's you. Uh, if you believe that, that's fine. But this one, I, I just cannot wait for him to ex uh, just hype us up. And at the end, tell us all oh, this is fake. I cannot wait for that. He's going to do that. I, I can see that coming. I believe that he's going to do that. I've seen many of his videos. I love this guy. Y Files W channel. He always set the story up, talks about conspiracies, and then debunks it at the end. I love that. I love that. I love that. Uh, brother, please look up Neil Armstrong. You will change your mind. You only need the right information. The moon landing never happened. He said it himself. The first guy that landed on the moon. I'll check it out. I'll check it out. I'll, I'll check it out for sure. Uh, why would we go back? For what? It would cost millions, if not billions, to return. They are actually not long ago. NASA did confirm that they're going back. If you're living by yourself, you are not. Uh, you are alone. Bruh. That's quite true but what was before dinosaurs if you have seen if you guys seen the paintings i believe mona lisa is one of those paintings uh i might be throwing different names there but i believe it's mona lisa essentially what i'm talking about is there are old paintings where you see just objects flying in in the sky just old ass pictures all, all old ass paintings so even our ancestors had thoughts of us not being alone maybe they were really painting stuff and maybe they were really painting what they were seeing in the skies or maybe it was their imagination i don't believe it was their imagination i believe they were just painting stuff that they were seeing around them and that's the the, the crazy part uh and the, the fact here is that over the years over the centuries hollywood the movies you see right the the, the pictures you see real or not everything is looking kind of like the same same when you think about aliens the, the first thought that comes to your mind is uh big eyes small nose uh small mouth small ears but big eyes big head big eyes small neck and, and just the grays you talk you hear about the grays uh little green aliens running around i think we are being programmed for sure because that's people were talking about this people were describing them the same way years ago and still to this day people describe them the same way it's like every it's one of like one of those nelson mandela kind of effect right everybody's thinking the same way in that aspect i don't know about that one am i making sense am i not making sense uh, it is getting lit the sun has went down compared to this technology our species was still rubbing sticks together to make fire at that moment i felt very very small they had no trouble entering the ship. Yeah, Daniel. It looked like the area was cleared by heavy equipment, though there were no machines in sight. The exterior of the ship was covered with impacts, strange shapes, and markings, but the interior walls were perfectly smooth. Before going further, Rutledge and Leonoff took a quick minute to confirm they still had radio contact to Leona in orbit and to ground control on Earth. They did. 
Over many centuries, lunar soil filled the floor of the ship. They weren't stepping on metal. About 60 feet in, patterns in the lunar dust indicated that some type of fluid had flowed there at one time, maybe a hydraulic leak, they couldn't be sure. Over the radio, they were instructed to grab samples, but all they can get was a little dirt from the ground. NASA wanted pieces of the ship's wall or equipment for analysis, but their hammers and chisels couldn't even scratch it, much less chip off a piece. But the walls did have a strange property, gravity. A gravitational field could be felt coming from the walls. And now that they focused on it, gravity on the ground felt slightly stronger on the inside of the ship. Rutledge speculated that this would make interstellar travel much easier. We take gravity for granted on Earth, but it is very much a key to our survival. When a human body is without gravity, it experiences physiological stress almost instantly. Without gravity, bone and muscle mass quickly wither, so daily vigorous exercise is needed. When the human heart doesn't have to contend with gravity, blood pressure goes out of balance. Sustain Planet Earth is just a perfect place to be by, by the looks because the sun, the sunlight, the the heat is never too crazy. Obviously, you hear cases where there's just too much heat, uh, people die because of heat as well. It wasn't like that all the time, right? It's uh, it's just never too cold to the point where a human body cannot resist. Uh, we have really adapted to our obviously our planet, but this planet just feels perfect, right? We are uh, not too close to the sun, so we get burnt out uh, and we get fried. And we're also not too far away where it's just gonna be freezing cold. Everything just feels perfect on the planet. Uh, it, it's just wild. Yeah, Quack, you are a little late for sure. And in injuries without gravity is dangerous good, because good. blood doesn't flow, it pools. It's space, any type of internal injury is almost certainly fatal. Our balance depends on gravity. The fluid in our ears that tells us which way is up suddenly has no concept of up. Digestion is more difficult without gravity helping food move through the body. The problems are endless. Engineers on Earth had many proposals on how to solve the gravity problem. Space stations could one day be built like wagon wheels like in the movie 2001, but there was no structure like that here. Gravity was coming from the ship itself, somehow. Rutledge and Leonov followed a path that led them to an upper floor. Down a wide hall and into a large chamber, they finally saw something that, even though they expected it, still surprised them. Signs of life. Oh shit! Oh, shit. What? In the darkness, the walls seemed to move. In the larger part of the ship, the walls were perfectly smooth, but here, moonlight was being scattered in all directions by a rough surface. When Rutledge and Leonov got closer, they saw what appeared to be plants and vegetation. Dried purple vines a hundred feet tall lined the walls. Even though there was no sound in space, Rutledge's mind couldn't help but fill the silence with the rustling of a breeze through trees on a calm day. Beneath the plants were trays that were collecting a thick yellow liquid. Upon closer inspection, it was gold and phosphorescent. Finally, something could be recovered from the alien ship. The men took about two liters of what they called golden tears. Golden tears, huh? Uh, that sounds ominous. For a minute, Rutledge had forgotten that they were broadcasting. From lunar orbit, Leona broke in. Damn. Will, we've got Houston on the line. Patch him through, Leona. Will, Alexi, these things are active. Video shows us that the plants have moved during your visit. Roger, Control. I think I've seen the move, too. The room continues for a long way. I think I see light up ahead. We could probably reach it in an hour. An hour? Negative, Will. We want you to protect the samples. Return to the lamb and get those canisters stoned. Roger that, Control. Returning to Len. Rutledge and Leonoff retraced their steps out of the ship and headed back to the lunar rover. About halfway through their walk, Leonoff grabbed Rutledge by the arm and pointed to the ground about 50 feet from the path. Will. Will, do you see this? What? Where? Two lines, side by side. How do you say? You know, imagine you're yeah, like you are really on the moon, looking, looking up, right? Because normally that's what they, that's how they describe it. That if you're on the moon, the Earth is not below you; it's actually above you. It's like you cannot compute Bruh. that, right? Because normally you would think that it would be below you. You would have to look below you to see the Earth. Because whenever you see the moon in the sky, it's kind of like you have to look up. So on the Earth, uh, if you're on the moon, you would have to look down to see the Earth, right? But it doesn't work like that. Whenever you see that, whenever you hear that and you see that in movies and uh, from NASA, it's like the Earth is always up, always up. 
Do you believe that? Because I've seen some of you say, and that's fine, because people believe that we have never been to the moon. Have we? Have we not? I don't know, man, that's, uh... They are the same distance apart. Parallel? Yes, do you see? I do. What is that? When they got close enough, they realized what the lines were. Tracks in the dust. Recent tracks made by a lunar rover, but not their lunar rover. Uh, rover team to orbiter. You there, Leona? I'm here, Will. What's up? You better get Houston back on the horn. Why? What is it? Tell them... Tell them we found Apollo 19. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. After a few hours of sleep, the Apollo 20 crew debated with ground control over whether to explore the Apollo 19 module. Rutledge, Snyder, and Leonov wanted to check for survivors, or at least find out what happened. Ground control was against it. They argued that whatever happened to Apollo 19 could easily happen to Apollo 20. Well, we don't think it's a good idea to follow the same path that led Apollo yeah. 19 to failure. We don't know if this is an equipment issue or if there's something dangerous at the land inside. Understood control, but they're- Yeah, that's uh, that's understandable. Like, they're advising them to not follow the same path. It's it's like the same thing with the with the with the pilots, right? Because the pilots, they there are usually two pilots, and they don't eat the same food. Because if one get uh, one get poisoned, you want to have the other one good so that he can fly the plane. Because if both of them eat the same thing, and if both of them get poisoned, then it's over, right? It's kind of over. So there are a lot of uh, precaution. There's a lot of uh, precautionary measures they take, which is which is good. So I understand why they're saying, yeah, do not follow that path. Families deserve to know what happened. Well, their families don't know they're here. As far as they know, their loved ones died in a training accident. Mm. Control, could Apollo 19 have any material to help us complete our mission? Negative. Apollo 19 has no additional resources. Control, is there a chance, even a small chance, that we find living astronauts? Negative. We're all sure there's no chance of finding anyone alive. One final question, Control. Go ahead, Will. Does Control agree that we leave no astronaut behind? Ground Control agrees. We're Damn. going. Roger that, Apollo 20. Proceed with caution. Good luck, Will. Control out. The black silhouette of Apollo 19's lunar module loomed on the horizon. It was still connected to its first stage booster, a sign that the astronauts hadn't left. Rutledge had a glimmer of hope that the crew of Apollo 19 could be alive somewhere in the alien ship. But the truth is, he expected to find three corpses. The Apollo 19 LEM was probably now a high-tech tomb, with final messages for families taped to the control panel, which is what he would have done. They parked the rover and Rutledge felt a wave of adrenaline wash over him. The hatch to the module was slightly open. This means it wasn't pressurized. If the astronauts were here, they weren't alive. Rutledge and Leonov walked cautiously around the module and inspected it for damage. It looked like it had landed hard. The nozzle skirt was partially buried and folded. Then Rutledge kicked something in the lunar dust. He bent down and brushed the gray soil away. It was a white glove with red fingertips. Apollo 20's colors were white and black. The glove belonged to someone from Apollo 19. Rutledge was trying not to panic. He looked around for Leonov. Planes can land themselves. Uh, pilots are just there for public reassurance. Uh, with the AI technology, uh, I do not. Uh, I do believe that in the future, uh, planes will be able to take off and land uh, on their own. Pilots would have to just uh, make sure that it lands perfectly. But they can. A plane can. We all know planes. Most of the time, when they're flying up high, they're on autopilot. Uh, so they maintain the same level of altitude. So yeah, uh, uh, facts, facts. But I don't know if they can like dead ass land on their cell on themselves or not. That, that I, I do not have the answer. Uh, quite frankly, I don't believe they can land on themselves, but if you attach them with the AI, they probably would be able to. But will people be uh, uh, assured? Would would you want to fly on a plane without any pilots? I, yeah, I, I, I see your point, Jason. Most people would choose uh, to have pilots instead of no pilots because you don't know, right? 
but but I don't but as of right now I don't think that planes can land themselves surely you can set the parameter so it's gonna land but is it gonna land exactly where you want it to land probably not Tesla planes oh hell yeah Tesla planes <laughs> yeah that probably gonna happen I, I do believe in the future like most of the stuff would be autopiloted uh just like how we're gonna have like Ubers and shit planes uh they can never you can ever since uh, nine. Yeah, I cannot say that word on YouTube. That's uh, one those numbers I cannot say on YouTube. Yeah. And off, but he didn't see him. Layanoff was already up the ladder and opening the hatch. Alexi, wait. Uh, wheel. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't dismiss the idea, though. I wouldn't dismiss the idea for sure. Gotta be open-minded to everything. Uh, do not believe everything, but also. Uh, don't dismiss everything in the in the moment, right? Because you never know; it might be true. So, Jason, I don't believe it for now, but uh, I'm not gonna dismiss it though. It's required. It's required now, so they can uh, they can uh, they can crash them from the ground. Lol. Okay. Uh, yeah, you dropped that lol. Yeah. But I see what what you're saying, and some of the stuff that you're saying kind of makes sense for sure. Uh, I do believe we have that technology, but are we really utilizing? I'm not sure about that. Inter but but yeah, I, I see that. I, I see that. There there is AI with the planes as well, so that's how they can stay up in the air. Uh, they can keep the same altitudes and uh, stuff like that. But the, the the pilots just need to direct the plane right, uh, and, and they want to make sure they are on the the correct path. Yo, M3TL, what's up, man? I do, man. What is it? Is something in there? I see your there point. There is something, point. yes, but now you're good. You're good. What? A body? It is a body, but. Uh... Will, it is not human. Bro, what? Rutledge and Leonov stood in silence for at least two minutes, taking in what they saw, unsure of how to proceed. Inside the Apollo 19 lunar module, buckled tightly to a folding metal table, actual footage. I cannot wait for him to debunk all of this. Was an alien body. Yes, but it appeared to be a humanoid female. She was naked, but her body was covered in a waxy substance. Yo, no Rutledge way! No way! I heard I, I I heard about this. I've seen this image before, like a long time ago. In fact, uh, yeah, the, yeah, the, that that was the image on his thumbnail as well, right? Y'all remember? Uh, any of you? Uh, any of you are aware, or what? And if you, I, I just click skip ads because on stream it said that the ads are playing. YouTube started playing ads, so my bad. I skipped the ad. Mm, yeah, this face reminds me. Uh, uh, drop a thumbs up guys i literally youtube wanted to play an ad i just skipped that i'm not gonna make that money from that okay uh drop a thumbs up i would appreciate that thought it could be a highly advanced type of pressure suit the alien female was about five and a half feet tall she had two arms and two legs like a human but she had six fingers on each hand on her forehead was a tattoo or oh. design that resembled markings that they saw inside the ship her face was decorated with a device that consisted of stalks fixed to her eyelids cheeks and mouth Near the table was an overturned container that had a little bit of the golden tear substance dripping out of it. Rutledge closed the hatch and started to pressurize the module. If they were, I've seen a lot of his videos, good videos, W channel. The fact that he has uh, actual footage, because I'm, uh, I believe this is way too good to be true. This is way too good to be true. I, I definitely feel like that he's gonna describe why it's fake and he's gonna debunk it in a bit. But the fact that he has actual footage now, I'm kind of suspect were going to examine the body, they needed to remove their helmets. Whoa, whoa, whoa hold on. Hmm? Remove the helmets, are they crazy? Well, they needed to see and specifically hear what they were doing. This, uh, this is a terrible idea. Uh, what if she implants an alien egg in them or something? Yeah, I don't think yeah. that. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> what if the alien gets some of the astronaut's DNA and then, and then it comes to Earth and makes an astronaut clone, which replaces the real astronaut, but the astronaut's a hero, so the clone, uh, the clone becomes a senator. And then, and then after a few years, the alien clone becomes president of the United States. Then what? Then what, huh? Then we got an alien clone in the White House? True. Actually, how much worse can it get? Well, once the cabin was true, pressurized, true, true, Rutledge true. and Leonoff gingerly removed their helmets. Rutledge expected the air to smell like decay, but there was a distinct aroma of almonds. Yeah, I don't know why, but that makes it even scarier. I agree. Leona was a biochemist before becoming an astronaut, so she would be helpful. But she was in orbit on the other side of the moon. So Rutledge and Leonov had to do the best they could until she came back into range. Rutledge felt for a pulse, but he couldn't detect one. He put a stethoscope on her chest. He couldn't hear a heartbeat, but he heard what he thought sounded like a whooshing sound, some kind of liquid moving through her body. They determined the alien was neither alive nor dead. 
she was in some kind of suspended animation. They removed the stalks from her face, and Rutledge thought she had a slight smile. From then on, they called her Mona Lisa. Rutledge gently examined the alien while Leonov filmed it. I, okay, I'm not sure if you were there or not, but we were, I was talking about that Mona Lisa painting kind of thing, right? Oh shit! Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now this this kind of feels familiar. I've seen this somewhere, bro. Like that is trippy. Actual footage, my ass, bro. Like I cannot wait for him to debunk it. There, there is no way. There's no way they will let a video like that on the loose. Even, yeah, let's just say, hypothetically, let's just say it is real, right? There is no way in a million years this video would live on YouTube. There is no way. Uh, I hope she's hot, Rick Clack. Bruh. Come on, man. Don't believe the hype. It's a, uh, it's a mixed game. It's a mixed game. It's a mixed game. Yeah, no, 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 no. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. There is no way. There is no the way. The photographs. <laughs> But man, these conspiracies are hella entertaining though, I'll, I'll say that. They're fascinating, for sure. Yeah, this one, this one! Yeah, that that is the exact image I have in my brain. That is the exact, I've seen this somewhere, I've seen this somewhere. Mm, yeah, this is the exact, I, I was saying, like, I've seen this somewhere, I, I kind of feels familiar, I've seen it somewhere. Yeah, this is, this is the one. I remember this. Yeah. It's a mix game. Yeah, mix game. Yeah, damn. Finally, Leona Steiner was back in range. She radioed down, but this time on a private channel. Uh, Snyder to Rover. Will, you okay? Uh, we're okay, Leona. Uh, we... We found something unexpected in the Apollo 19 lamb. No crew, but, uh... We know. Houston is back online. We can see everything. You Holy. want to patch me through? Not yet. Will? Um... What is it? Ground control knows. Oh my they know. God. They know what? About oh, what you found in Apollo 19's lamb. They, they already know. How is that possible? Will they know? But we also found a bloody glove, and I'm pretty sure it belongs to Jim Reynolds. We need to go- Will they know about that too? They know all of it! I don't Holy. understand how they would- Will, Control wants you to bring the alien woman back to your module. What? Why? They, Why? uh... Leona? What? Damn. What is just it? Just say it, just say it. They want us to bring her home. What? I mean, oh, shit. Oh, yeah, shit. classic human, classic human. It's not ours, but we want to bring it home. Like everything, yeah, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta take that baddie home. You know, alien baddies. You gotta take the alien baddies home, man. Yeah, that's uh, Houston. That's America for you. Even if it's not yours, we gotta take it home. We don't understand it. We gotta take it home. I, I mean, in this scenario, understandable. Mm, there's some wrong with this, man. There's some wrong with this. The Apollo 20 urban legend has become one of my favorites. And the more I learn about it, the more I like it. When YouTube user retired AFB, AKA Commander William Rutledge posted his Apollo 20 videos, the internet exploded. The videos look so good, but is yeah. it real? Absolutely, no. damn it. There are a few articles. Yeah, I was waiting for this one. I was waiting for yeah. this one. So, yep, I don't think it is out there that debunk the videos practically frame by frame but there's no reason to go through the trouble someone openly admitted to creating them the videos were created by french artist theory speth as part of a science fiction film project he was working on yeah. he used a combination of practical effects and 3d to create the videos the two videos that got the most attention were the ones of the control panel and of the alien woman because they look hell entertaining hell entertaining i was kind of waiting for this one he always does this he always sets it up and at the end he's like nah man it was fake it was fake this and that he doesn't do that all the time though but i i like the channel a lot because uh yeah I, I love the conspiracies but i also love the fake stuff so uh and especially when you're talking about serious topics like that you want to be as true as possible with it um so yeah this is fascinating stuff fascinating man look really good but he has a lot of other videos connected to this project and they don't look as amazing now even though speth freely admitted to creating the legend 
Somehow, it took nine years for anyone to bother talking to him about it. Credit goes to Chad Baxter. He looks like a psycho. Bro. Bro. He looks like Lester from GTA. Yeah, Mona Lisa, and this is that painting. So he really did do that. But I'm sure there must be a conspiracy out there that the government paid him to keep his mouth shut. That everything he leaked was actually real. But they told him to just pretend that you really made that up. I'm sure there must be a conspiracy somewhere about that that too. But he openly admitted that it was fake. Uh, so, yeah. For finally interviewing Speth in 2016, and I'll link to that interview below. The story you heard today is basically a mashup of a few versions of the Apollo 20 urban legend floating around the internet. Mixed in with the novel Speth wrote that tells the entire story. I'll link to Speth's novel below, but before you spend money on it, be warned. Despite writing the book in English, Speth doesn't speak it very well. So mm. as far as stories go, it's clunky, but still it's entertaining. In Speth's version of the story, the alien woman wakes up during the procedure and knocks oh, Rutledge shit. unconscious. And those golden tears they collected? The yellow goo? Yeah. In the story, it has medicinal properties. Lanov has cancer with only a few months to live. He drinks the goo and it cures him. By the way, Alexei Leonov is one of the most famous cosmonauts in history, so Speth changed his name in the novel. Also, Rutledge and Snyder, they end up having an affair. Yeah, okay, so what I'm getting, I'm, I could be wrong, but he earlier he showed, yeah, this video he showed. Mm, is that the same person he's talking about now? Kind of, I don't know, no, it's not the same person. So what was that video all about? This video, right? This felt real. Uh, this feels. I feel like this video that he showed was real, but the rest was, uh, yeah, made up. Are in space. Then they get married, and they also drink the yellow goo, which makes them age more slowly. Yeah, but what about the bloody glove? Right. Remember the plants inside the ship? Yeah. Well, they ate the Apollo 19 crew. The glove was all that was left. Uh, wow. Yeah, there's a lot going on in that novel. As I said, it's clunky. Despite Speth admitting to creating this. You'll find interviews with the quote unquote real William Rutledge, and those interviews have expanded the lore. But you know, I don't trust the French. How do we know he isn't just taking credit? Well, a lot of people thought that, and that's why it's so weird that nobody bothered to talk to him. But about halfway through the interview with Chad Baxter, Speth holds up a mask of the alien woman. And it's the same alien for sure? 100%. Go back and freeze frame. It's absolutely the same alien. If Man. you want to see exactly how Speth made the video look so good, I'll link to an article called Apollo 20 Deconstructed. So how is a story like this believed by so many people? Yeah, he made it sound very believable. I had Rocky Rocky skills. Have you heard about Google employees creating uh, AI and the FBI told him to shut it down? Google fired him eventually. No, I have not heard this story for so many years. I think the answer is easy. It's the American government's fault. Yeah, it's always the government's fault. You don't yep. even know what I'm going to say. The, it doesn't matter. The it's still the government's fault. There really always were is. three more Apollo missions planned, and they really were canceled due to lack of funding and lack of public interest. That is one of the biggest tragedies in human history. Apollo 17 was extremely successful. Space exploration should have been a top priority for the United States and the Soviet Union. Instead, they made their top priority war in Vietnam. In today's money, that war would cost a trillion dollars. Yeah. In 2022, NASA's budget was $22 billion. That's a budget reduction of 90% since the 1970s. Yet the United States Department of Defense budget was $722 billion. Not including black budget. That's where our tax money is going, buckos. That's uh, truly where. If we didn't have to spend that much on a war, we, they could have spent that on hospitals, on education system, bettering education system, bettering people's lives, uh, invest that in space travel, uh, in space and going to space and other avenues of life and helping people out as well. But now, you know, war makes the money. So uh, the money is always in the old people. Money is not in dead people. Money is not in good people, good and healthy people. Money is never in them. Money is only in sick people. That's why the big pharma will always try to give you medicine that will not cure your disease. It will pr uh, just extend it where you can live for a little longer. L live a little longer, okay? Live a little longer. That's where the money's at. That's why they don't want to cure you. They want to make sure you, uh, they want to just extend your symptoms and make sure that 
pain, uh, for example, easy example, uh, they want to give you painkillers. Just an example, just a hypothetical, uh, just a, uh, what's the correct term for this one? Uh, just a metaphor, right? They want to give you a painkiller to numb your pain, but they don't want to cure your pain. They want to numb your pain for an hour, but not for forever, uh, eternal, if that makes sense. Metaphor, metaphor. That's it. Right, so let's call it a trillion. That's really why the Apollo program ended. America beat Russia to the moon. Legally, that was the mission. Yeah. Not exploration, not research, not science, not the betterment of all mankind. It was petty competition. That's why I'm rooting for the Chinese to keep launching missions to the moon. Bruh. I hope they find more helium-3 and other valuable resources, because that's the only way my country gets back to focusing on space. If you can't count on American ingenuity, at least you can count on good old American greed. And the United States better not wait too long, because if China has only a fraction of the success of the Apollo program, it won't be long before we're all speaking Mandarin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, click on this video on the screen and I will see you right there.